I am joined here by the Christian Law Captain Peter Smith and Ryan Daly, the man from Carrickmore, Egunda, Tyrone, or Cheer Owen. Peter, looking forward to this one. Is this your second or third? Uh, it's a third final, yeah. Uh, looking forward to it shortly, yeah. Look, Kenny Finals, it's where we want to be at the club football at the end of the year, so it is. So we're happy to be there now and we look forward in a couple of weeks' time. It's probably fair to say you didn't have as tough a run as you would have liked for your sake. It's not a, you know, that's not to be disrespectful to any other teams, but that's just the look of the draw. I'm sure maybe that you would have preferred Stern or Test. Now, the Gales did, you know, it was, it was a wet, dirty evening and you had to, it was a, a war of attrition and you just came out on top. Look, every team threw up his own, uh, threw up his own uh, battle against us. Look at the draw of these. Look, we got a couple of scores to take the, the score away from teams. Look, it made, it made it look easier on us now. But games in, in Lacken against Bellingham and Mullahorn were no easy games. And the game against the Gales here again, a little dog fight. It's not an easy in the championship, such as that. We've seen a dish or two. Yeah. Um, <coughs> you're, you're obviously, the loss of Paddy Lynch is, you know, but you have to get over that and move on. I know Paddy'd love to wear Paddy'd love to be and all that. But you don't have him. End of story. The last championship you won, you didn't have Darren McVitie. So that's the way you have to look and you have to take the positives out of it, I suppose. That's what the panel's for, so it is. Look, we lads have stepped up this year. We can't ask for much more of them, so we can't. Look, Paddy's a massive loss. The year he was having for Calvin this year, this year, it's the best he's ever been at. So, massive loss, surely, so goes, but can't talk about that now. We have to look forward to two weeks and, and, and see where it takes us. Yeah, uh, I suppose the one thing is, you're a fairly experienced outfit now. You're not going to get carried away and the whole bunting and all that kind of stuff around Skintown and, and all that. I was in it this morning myself, but that's not going to be something that's going to impress you either way. You know you have a job to do and the concentration levels will have to be up there. Yeah, that's it. Like, look, a few flags now should make no difference to the preparation for a game. So it doesn't. It's another game, so it is. We look forward to it. Uh, we'll prepare as we always prepare for every game. Let's not change any, any difference at all. So. Logan ladies beat Krishala <laughs> in the final uh, of obviously the senior ladies. Krishala, Kamogi have won the senior and intermediate. Now the two is... I know Lurgan is slightly different in the fact that they will have Mahara, but now you are both vying for the football title, the, the senior men's football title. So pretty much the two clubs have dominated the county, you could have to say, in, in, in nearly all codes. Well, you could say that too, yeah, but look, we're, this, the, week, the club did the last three weeks, three finals. It's, it's great, so it is, but it means nothing really, so it doesn't. It's another game of football. Look, at Rammer there and Mayor too, so they are, and same with Lurgan ladies. So... We're going to do our bit and, uh, and uh, hopefully take care of themselves. You can hand over there now to, to, to Ryan. Ryan, is this your first foray down across the shock? First, first year um, in, uh, I suppose, here by, by luck. Um, I signed up to being a, a coach along with a man and unfortunately that fell through. Um, I was looking forward to working alongside him. Um, and I've ended up for, I don't know where it's good or bad, as, the, the, as manager of the squad. Um, have enjoyed my time. Uh, fabulous group of players, fabulous club. Um, I suppose you're after mentioning there about the, the club and all the success. And I'm not surprised when I see the leadership um, and the people and the serious work rate that goes behind the scenes in Crosser Lock. Um, and it's, it's a credit to everybody involved that they're actually competing at all those levels. Um, and you know yourself, you don't get there unless there's serious hard work being done. Um, and that's, on the that's level, just yeah. been paid off, so fair play to them all. And obviously, you know, I remember a few years ago being at a, a senior final in, in Mead and all management people on both sides were from Cavan. Now we have uh, Carrickmore men uh, and we have uh, men from Trillick. So it's an all, it's an all Tyrone management team. And of course the Tyrone final, they won't, they'll miss their own club Threadley playing, you just fell short at the second last hurdle last weekend. I look, I would know Pat through through the schools and himself and Jude are, are big Threadley men. Um, Threadley are one of the teams in Tyrone at the, at the minute that are up there um, and probably would have aspirations like Errigal to go on a wee bit further. Both clubs would believe that they're capable of going on in Dulster um, and causing a bit of trouble. Um, exciting young players with, with massive county backing behind them. Um, so... It's no shock that they are where they are, um, and look, I suppose it's disappointing for the two lads that they're missing their own club in a county final, but I'm sure they're not mine um, come Sunday at four o'clock. If, um, yeah, that's very, very true and very well put, Ryan. Uh, and of course, there could be replays in either county, we don't know, and that could throw up its own. Uh, 
may be fair to say that uh, Tyrone teams, as a rule, don't go particularly well in Ulster for a team that, for a county that has such a proud tradition that over the last 20 years in inter-county football in Ulster, would that be because the leagues in Tyrone are so competitive, so you come out of a 12 or 13 game league and then into a, I mean really, you only have to win four games in Tyrone to win the championship, but is it that the league takes so much out of them? Look, our championship's unique in the fact that once you're beat, once you're out. Um, and the pressure that comes along with that to, to win, I know we talk it's only four games, but to win those four games and the opposition that you come up again is very, very intense. Um, it's, it's an intense championship. Uh, the, the standard is very high, and I, I don't mean that any bad way in our county, but the, the throne championship is, is hard to get till the, the finals. Um, and look, this last eight years we've had eight different winners. Um, that's probably another reason. You, you win your first championship in a long time. Obviously, there's a bit of partying to be done back home. Um, and then within a week later, you're back out in Ulster. Um, but the fact that you're not getting one or two years in Ulster to grow into the Ulster it's, club football, it's, it's a different football. style of football. Yeah. It's winter football. It's heavy ground. It suits different big men. It suits the way it's, it's played. And I suppose sometimes those teams there, like Kilku, they're cruising. And then they're getting consistently playing at that level. Um, yeah, crossed on it for 20 years like. and they had that experience so look you know yourself sometimes w w the, we all talk about you have to lose one to win one um, and unfortunately for the teams in Tyrone they don't get two years in a row at Ulster Club so I think that's one of the biggest downfalls for ourselves um, the fact that you have two weeks to prepare before you go to Ulster and look that's probably down to the fact that the, the county team has had, had good runs in the inter-county level. Okay. And look, there's nothing you can do about that. Um, I know maybe our top four teams, maybe our top four, maybe top five or six teams uh, could probably compete in the Tyrone Championship. But really in the Tyrone Senior Championship, there is no bad team. Well, you asked that question to Peter earlier on, and I wouldn't say that there's any bad team in Championship football. Um, the only thing that's different in Calvin compared to Tyrone is you've, you've got another opportunity, another day out, and you've got a couple of opportunities. And for me, you know, I think when you're beat twice, you should be out of championship. If you get beat twice and you're going back to another game, can you really call it a championship? Everybody's got different views on it. I think that you know, if you're beat twice, you, you should be out. The teams here that, that we have come up again have been superb. They've given us all different challenges. Um, and I suppose, as Peter said, the scores don't reflect the games. Um, a lot of those games, we got it very tight in the first half for 40, 30, 40 minutes. And then at the very end, we, we, we run away with a couple of goals and a couple of scores that kind of fluttered or, or showed it that didn't reflect the game as such, you know. But last um, Saturday would have been different. You got, out, you got the run early and then it was... A, it was. Well, last Saturday was a completely different game because there was a gale force breeze going down the, the pitch and people in the stand and wouldn't have realised how strong it is. If you're chatting to any of the players, there was a serious breeze went down. Um, we got it in the first half and we got into the lead 7-1. Um, and we knew that if we came out in the second half and, and only scored one point, it wasn't big, wouldn't be good enough. Um, we came out, we looked secure for 10, 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden, Gales got their purple patch. But thankfully, we put two or three scores on the board. Um, we had great impact from the bench. Stephen Smith came on, got a, a serious score to settle us down at a time when we were under pressure. Um, I would say defensively, we, we were very, very strong. And look, Giroud kicked two or three outstanding scores. Um, but that's the caliber of player he is, and, and we were expecting him to do that. Um, so... We're glad to get out, and we're glad to be going till the final now next week. Ryan, I think it's probably fair to say, look, at, this is not your first rodeo, but Rammer are very miserly at the back. They don't give away a lot at the back. And I suppose you've studied your tapes and you know that. I just hope that we have good weather, and I think we have two good football on teams that are going to have a cut at it. Obviously, tactics have to come into place, but they don't tend, and they probably have two or three lads back now coming back to better form that were injured earlier in the championship. Look... I suppose, I said earlier on, I think the two best squads have made it to the county final. Yeah. The, two, the two strongest squads. Um, we have played Rammer twice this year already and they've beat us twice in both games. Um, they have a serious outfit. Pat and Jude have done serious work along with Ray Cole to get them to where they are. They're physically fit, they're strong, they've got great experience under their belt. And I suppose, um, as I've said earlier, I think the two best players in the championship to date have been Ben Smith and Jack Brady. Um, and they are key to that defensive structure. 
Um, so two quality players, and, and that's not taken away from the people that's around them. There's a lot of other players there. They don't leak goals easy, but I suppose that's the, the task for us to try and put one yeah. in um, on the big day. And uh, look, we're going to have to play out of our skins, as too will Rammer, uh, to get over the line. And I suppose every manager wants their team to turn up on the day and perform. And if you perform and get beat by a better team, well, look, you can take your hat off and shake your hand with some all the best. And you know what? You're both red and black, or black and amber. You're both black and amber. Uh, it doesn't matter what colour of jersey. Obviously, maybe there's going to be some decision made. I don't know. You don't know. It doesn't matter what's on your back. It's... It was in the chest. Well, look, the, the, the lads, whatever they decide on the day, whether we both wear home jerseys or flick a coin or wear away jerseys, it not matter. At the end of the day, the cross or lock badge will be on the, the jersey that we wear. Um, and I suppose the lads all know what that means to them and to their families, and they'll be trying to represent as best they can. And will we see, will we see a few Carrick Moore flags in the crowd, do you think? <laughs> Look, uh, I don't think many woods of them boys will come down. There might be a, a few spectators that will come down uh, without a shadow of a doubt. There's been plenty of well wishes from, from the club. Um, and look, I suppose the, the, the big issue for a lot of the people there is the two games are on the same day. So uh, we'll not be putting any pressure on them. Um, that'll not matter to me. Um, I'm down here with a, a new crew, with a new bunch. Um, and I suppose, look, we're looking forward to the big day. We're looking forward to the experience. And we, we hope to come out on the right side of the battle. Ryan, to yourself and Kieran Briardy, and I'm not exactly sure who else is with your backroom team. Uh, who else have you? Uh, Stephen Beattie is in Stephen. coaching and Tom Gribben and Tom. is there and as we have Damien Lukey. I have, I have an army of men with me if I'm being honest and I don't want to name them all because I probably will leave somebody out but um, there's a serious network of, of help and assistance being provided by the club um, and we're very, very grateful for that and as I said before, that all boils down to the serious work that the likes of uh, Mark Rehill and Adrian Lukey is doing behind the scenes so fair credit to them. And we have two captains, Jack the Miller and Peter the Miller, and two Christian Art mothers. Uh, Jack's mother, Jack's grand uncle, would have won seven championships under 40 with Christian Art from 66 to 72. So there's a lot of history in his house, and he'd have uncles cheering against him, and he'd have his mother cheering for him. And Peter, obviously, his father, Shea, would have played, and his uncles, uh, you know, all that. So to both teams, we wish the very best. To Ryan and Peter, the very best, and may football be the winner. Thank you very much.